Alright, so we're ready to introduce Mueller's method and uh, this method is actually quite simple and, and in order to introduce the Mueller's method the first thing I'm going to do is actually just show you uh, something that we've seen before and that is the uh, uh, let me draw my happy little function here so we have some function here and uh, let's say we're doing the secant method okay you should recall that the secant method uh, uses two points so let's say this point and this point and then it projects that doo -doo 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 -doo, down onto the axis right it projects that point down onto the axis and it uses that point as a guess okay and uh, you may recall that I said that the secant method is a linear here let me let me the secant method is a linear approximation method or or rather uh, let's call it uh huh let's call it a linear interpolation method uh okay so now let's now let's well I, guess, I think we might have room to have the title on here uh let's show again an equation here some our little function here that we're trying to find the roots of and now what Mueller's method is very simple it's actually the same method uh as the secant method only instead of doing linear interpolation Mueller's method is quadratic interpolation quadratic interpolation namely we simply use uh, perhaps we have this point and this point and we just use a third point so then we fit a quadratic to that whoop and we find where that quadratic intersects with the axis and so let's let's say we're looking for this root maybe although although you can find multiple roots and then here we go you'll see crosses the axis there crosses the axis there and uh with with Mueller's method uh we we use the root uh, that agrees with the sign of uh, of B and so that tells us uh, which root to use and so this is this is Mueller's method uh, again we're only going to be using one root and and it depends on what B is but let's say we're using this root uh, and then and that helps us to find uh, the root now um, so that's it that, that's Mueller's method uh, the other thing I mentioned here though uh, just just in comparing it to other methods as well is uh, there's also inverse quadratic interpolation which is Mueller's method might better be called quadratic interpolation method and then we have the inverse quadratic interpolation that uses that uses a quadratic term but in y instead of in x uh, and but but by the way now that I bring up inverse uh, quadratic interpolation I will just point out the biggest drawback of inverse quadratic interpolation uh, is uh, is the fact that inverse quadratic interpolation uh, if you're not really if you're not fairly close to their root it does not converge uh, uh, may perhaps at all so you have to be really close to the root that's why it's used in Brent's method so anyway so this is Mueller's method and again uh, again uh, Focusing, emphasizing. Let's see. Let's we we've got to emphasize one more thing here. So let's say we're using Mueller's method, and we have some equation here that we're solving. And let's say it looks like this. Wow. Okay. So we can use Mueller's method, and we're going to fit a quadratic to this, which it's already basically a quadratic. Maybe. Uh, let's say it's not, but but let's say we fit this quadratic to it uh -huh. fit this quadratic to it 
Aha! Uh -huh. What's going on? What's going on? Roots? Are there roots to this equation? Are there roots? Are there roots? Anybody? And of course there are roots, but the roots are complex. Complex. Complex roots. Okay. Uh, now let me switch over and, and, and actually plot this out and, and, and do solve for the roots of, of, of an equation like this. Here we go. Uh, again, just so so we have MATLAB up here now, and just to give a, a real quick example, uh, let's say x uh, equals uh, negative uh, maybe negative five zero point zero one to five, and then say y equals x squared uh, plus um, well, let's say plus four. All right. And now, if we just plot out uh, x and y, and let's plot that out in red, and then plot uh, x, and then x times zero, so we got, and let's plot that out in um, yellow. So let's do that, and then, oh, forgot to put hold on. Hold on makes it so. So the plot. Um, keeps the same, keeps it, oops, so graph, okay, uh, so there we are, so we have the line at zero, and then we have this, and this is above, so you can see that it never intersects the x-axis, but of course it has roots, and we can check that, we can just say roots, roots, um, and then uh, what, what MATLAB wants here is the coefficients, a, b, c, right, um, and the coefficient, first we have one, and then there's no x, so that's zero, and then four. And if we find the roots of that, uh, those, as you can see, are both imaginary roots, at one at plus two and one at minus two. So those are both on the complex plane. And again, then, the advantage here, whoa, huh, yeah, you could see that well enough, but let me pull it down here a little better. Okay, yeah, so you see that. Uh, the advantage here uh, of Mueller's method then is that it can also also find complex complex roots which may may be desirable. Now, is there there is an issue uh, that comes up uh, when using Mueller's method, and that issue is uh, what do you use for x3. So uh, in other words, what points? So you have three points and you use them and you fit it and you find the roots, but then you're going you're gonna to go through another iteration after you've estimated the roots. Uh, you know, you're going to evaluate the function at your estimated roots and, and you're going to try again. So what do you use um, for, for your x3? And the answer here is if you're only finding real roots, if the real roots, if the real only, uh, then use the use points closest uh, to new root estimate. And that's going to be x3. Okay, and if both real, if both real and imaginary use um, you you do them in order. So uh, if you have, let's just say use in order, that is uh, x1, x2, well, let's, what did you say, x0, x1, x2, if we go from that to x1, x2, x3. 
So we just we just go in order if we're using uh, both real and imaginary roots. And so uh, you you uh, and and that's that's the same as the secant method does. The secant method uh, doesn't necessarily look at the closest ones. The secant method uh, goes in order, which allows it to bounce back and forth and things. And so same thing, same thing, and that's what we do. This is Mueller's method.